phenomenal, Nick, absolutely phenomenal. Because I kept in the West Country, people kept saying, that's it, you're not going to be a pro, you're not going to be a pro. And I know it's easy in hindsight to say it, but I always had that belief something was going to happen for me. And um, thankfully it did, but I never thought it'd be Trevor Francis that came in for me. And I, obviously I've got a lot and we're going to talk about, I'm sure, stuff where I was disappointed with him, decisions he made about me in my time at Blues. But I have to say I've got a lot of respect for the man and he was the one who dragged me for non-league football at the end of the day. So for him to do that is a gamble for him. And he paid £100,000 with me and Howard Forrington. So it wasn't small money at that time. That was mm. quite money for the club. Um, so I thank him for that. And, and like you say, to turn up at, at Wentworth Golf Course and I had a Renault 19 with smoke blowing out the back of it and I pressed the button and went down this long drive and there's this monstrosity of a house and the doors open, big wooden doors, and there's Trevor Francis stood in front of you. It's like, that's what dreams are made of. Mm. I remember the carpets being like shag pile, thick carpets. <laughs> of course, you go through them. There's pictures of Trevor everywhere because... That's Trevor. He wants all the pictures of him. <laughs> what, are you, what are you trying to say? <laughs> what are you trying no, no, no. Listen, he, he's, a, he's a great guy. He's yeah. a great, great guy. And I love him to death. But um, he, he liked the fine things in life, that's for sure. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yep. And he was brought up that way as well. So his background to my background was completely different. Um, I think his man management skills at times could have been improved. And I think a lot of players would have said that. But in my eyes still, he, he's, he's a great man. I thank him a lot for for taking me from non-league football. Nice words, mate. Thank you. Yeah, we we'll appreciate that. Mm. Paul? Yeah, um, we're, we're, I'm just look, look, reading some questions from some of our viewers. Obviously, these are coming in live. So, another question from Carl BZ. What would be your dream manager's job, apart from, obviously, managing the Mighty Blues? So, that kind of leads on to another question as well. So, you can do this one as well, where who was your boy or club and, and, and also who was your football hero, obviously, growing up as well? Yeah, good questions. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I... I'd like to manage just in the EFL, any any league club, any full time job where I can really show, yeah, show I'm about show my skills. The only frustration is I only train these lads or get them Tuesday, Thursday nights, and then obviously on a match day. Um, even though we've done some brilliant stuff over the two and a half years, and it's been great, so the progression's been good. So any any chance to do something full time? Um, Kevin Keegan was my hero growing up, um, and probably because Kevin Keegan. Ta -da. I think was never, yeah, the hair. Before I'd have this one today. Um, yeah, he, he wasn't, I don't think people might laugh at this. He wasn't the most gifted football player in the world, by the way, Kevin Keegan. But what he did, he, he was the most professional, the fittest bloke you're ever going to see. And I remember watching him as a seven or eight-year-old, and he was a physical specimen. Yeah. I, do you know what? I, I've got a lot of admiration for that. And I became a Liverpool fan, so... Born in 1970, my first recollection of real good football on the TV, 77 European Blues, ironically, was at Anfield. So that, that wasn't a bad way to go out, actually. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Right. You must have got on well with Dealey then, Jerry, when you was at the Blues, because obviously he's a massive Liverpool fan, isn't he, as well? Yeah, no, Dealey, yeah, we got on, got on really, really well. I remember playing against Dealey when he was at, he went to Northwich Victoria on loan from Crewe. And I was playing for Bath at the time, and I remember this big lump of a bloke scary big bloke and I thought what the hell is this? <laughs> and um he was he was phenomenal and, and also at blues but what a lovely man as well I got to say good good character nice person um yeah. Yeah, we had our we had our chats about the Reds of course we did and um yeah like I said I support him still now yeah yeah we had uh, we had Dealey on last week and it was a, a great show interesting insights uh, some of his times down at the blues and uh, like you say what an absolutely lovely man an absolute proper nice gentleman really nice yeah yeah lovely yeah. lovely yeah. Um, some of the other questions as well that we've been asked in the week. Um, obviously, you've mentioned it yourself, Jerry, already anyway, about, you know, almost anyway, obviously with the obviously being in the team all the way up to the final of the Worthington Cup in 2001 and unfortunately being left out in the final. Um, I mean, how was, obviously at the time, how, how was, can, can you talk us through how you were feeling then and, and obviously what, what happened, etc. cetera? Hey, Brian. <laughs> I break down here, lads. Um, no, it, it's, it's the most common question I get asked by any Birmingham City fan, I've got to yeah, say. Yeah. So, um, and I think you all sort of felt that for me as well. Yeah, having, did, yeah. Having played every round and having played, and I heard, I heard your interviews with Dealey last week and he spoke about this game, the Ipswich semi-final. I'll take some beating at St Andrews that game. Mm. Yeah. And, and everyone uses this word, it was rocking. And it was, it was one of those nights that you, you, you're just never going to get, you're never going to get again. And... Um, so obviously playing in that game and 
the jubilation of that and coming out of it. And you think, well, you're playing a semi-final, you get a club, not just me, I'm, I, was, I was a part of it, but you, you play in the game and you, you get to a major cup final and it happens to be Liverpool, just, you know, I think, well, I'm going to be in that team, definitely. Um, now, listen, I know I was in and out of the team. I knew that, I understood that. But I thought I, I was adamant I was going to play. John McCarthy had just come back from his broken leg, if you remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah I do, yeah. He wasn't long back. <clears throat> and the disappointment in that is was that Macca, he wasn't really 100% fit for that game. And me and Nicky Eden, I listened to you one with... I just thought you, I listened to you a lot, lads. Uh, Nicky Eden was, <laughs> was on and Nick talked about me and him, our relationship down that right-hand side. And when I bombed forward, he sat in for me. Vice yeah. versa. We had such a good relationship. Um, and he's, he's a good lad as well. Yeah. So going down to, we went down on the third sessions. I was involved in it. And um, people asked me, when did I find out? I find out on the coach going to the game. No way. As, as we were about to go out. And that's the thing that disappoints me a little bit, that I never really, yeah. I'd been told prior to that. So that comes as a really big shot then. And not only was I not playing, I wasn't even on the bench. So I think you remember David Holdsworth just ended up yeah. going on the bench. And that was an even bigger disappointment because what you can't do then, you can't sit there and listen to the national anthem and take part in it. You can't, you know, I remember walking on the pitch um, when we arrived there and I was stood there looking around the stadium and I had some like 80 people from the West Country go over. And it's the worst feeling I've ever felt. I, I don't mind saying it, I was in tears. I was literally yeah. completely gone. Yeah. Skip, Skip Martin O'Connor come over and I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go. I'm going to get in a taxi. I'm going to go. I can't, I can't cope. He said, don't, mate. He said, you'll regret it. Honestly, just stay. Be part of it. Be around it. And I did. I stayed. But it never, it never really felt as if it was, I was part of it because of that. Yeah. Uh, sure. so, mm. Even now, thinking back on it, and you can probably tell me, voice, it's, it's a major disappointment to me. Yeah. Uh, I got back in the team probably two games later, I think, away at Crystal Palace. I yeah. Back in, the, in the team and played a run of games again. Um, but it happens and you've got to get on with it there's lots of disappointments for players in their career that was a huge yeah. for me I did go back to the Millennium and play for Cheltenham Town at 36 in a League 1 playoff League 2 playoff sorry yeah uh, and we, we got promoted but didn't really replace of course it wasn't going to replace that day no no, no. it was a massive day out there wasn't it it was massive what an atmosphere for us, for us as supporters I mean like you know I'm 58 years old now and um, it looks a lot older I know <laughs> I don't look as old as that. <laughs> and uh, for, for us as supporters, you know, to, to get to that, I mean, that Ipswich game was just, it was, it's, it's one of my best memories ever, the, the noise that we were making in that place, man. I just, I just can't believe it. It was, it was absolutely awesome. And, um, and to get to that final and, and to be robbed as well, oh. you know, by Delary, <laughs> that, yeah. that was a bitter one to swallow. Well, all those, see all those things there are a bit of a blur to me because... I was in such a bad space. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. I only watch when I've watched it back. Obviously, now I've watched it back, and I've watched it back. But when you're there, and you're almost in a daze because of that decision as well. So, I can't. Like I said, I, I want to enjoy the national anthem. What an occasion to enjoy, and how loud we are as blue noses. How that was sung, and then when you were, I mean, I can, I can obviously recollect keep right on being sung around the stadium because it was phenomenal. We outsung. You'll never walk alone. Oh yeah. That was so um, noisy. We drowned it out. Yeah, two of, the, two of the best anthems you're ever going to hear in English yeah. football. Yeah. yeah. Head to head in, in a stadium that's a better atmosphere than Wembley, actually. Absolutely. Completely agree with you. So Incredible, wasn't it? That I remember that like it was yesterday, just before the game. Yeah. With everyone, uh, yeah. And, and, and saying that, you know, that, but then as a player, I go back to St Andrews and then being that time when we'd get 20,000 plus every week to hear the Jerry Jerry chant. <laughs> or I want a header or something that that lives long that will live till my grave because yeah when we verbitated around that stadium it, that was phenomenal as well so even though you want to know what else though Jerry we still remember it and that's some, that's really 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 proper important we still yeah. remember it yeah I felt as if I had a lovely rapport with the fans and I, I st- oh, mate loved it I still I still do I went I went to the Bristol City game um, this season the 3-1 win down there obviously, because we use a few Bristol City players on loan, so I went and I got a ticket and I went and sat on the end, the Bristol City end. I wish I never did. I wanted to be in that end with the Blues fan, because <laughs> it was just, it was such a, I just wanted to be in there and I thought, what, what a great occasion that would be to be in there and I will. I'll come back up and I will, I will definitely come back up. I get invited up, obviously, by Kevin and by Tom Ross. Well, let us know when you do, we'll make the day of it. Yeah, it'd be great, mate. It'd be great. Too right, too right. 
Mm. A message from Ian Danton. He says, I hope you're doing well, Jerry. Oh, Dan's top man. No, he's a good bloke as well. Lovely, lovely man. He stays in touch with me on Twitter and what have you. Yeah, he's a nice guy, Dan. It's a nice one. Uh, hello, Ian. Good regards. And hope your family are safe and everything. I wonder if he's had his hair cut in his... He must be surely by now. Of course, that is gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jerry, Stephen Gill was asking, what is it? What was it like after? Because obviously you were involved in the in the playoff final win as well, weren't you? Over Norwich, he was in that. He was obviously in yeah. the uh, in, in the um, in the squad. Um, what was it like after that when we got promoted? Now that was good because I knew I knew where I was then, Paul. I, I, that wasn't that wasn't a disappointment. That was you know there was a lot of us. When there, Tom Williams, Percy didn't play in that game. I think did he? I think no, he got sent off. He got sent off, didn't he? Sheffield part of that group still. That that was one thing about that team or that squad of players. David Holdsworth, it, that wasn't what we were about as a group. We just we just got on with it. Yeah. And, um, Norwich was the same. I remember I remember walking through the streets of Cardiff, actually, the same building the atmosphere and going through. And then obviously I was on the pitch celebrating at the end in the photos in the dressing room. And um I got my I've got my medal, I've got my playoff medal as yeah. well. So um I've got I've got all that because I've played some games and played a part in that season as well. I've got my Worthington Cup medal. Got Patrick Berger's shirt from the with <coughs> as well. We might as well swap shirts, mate. So um, it was something something along those lines. But um, <laughs> no, right, yeah, that 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 Norwich was fine. It, all the celebrations afterwards, of course, we all celebrated together when we come back. I think it was like a five day bender we ended up on. And none yeah. of us, <laughs> five days, what's up here? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we went home for a week after us. Um, <laughs> but no, my way, and I was over on that side. And they chanted my name constantly, and I was right by the fans. You know, on the way side, through. And those, what was that? those games, Nick, they just they live with you forever. They, honestly, they yep. do. They live with yeah, you forever. Yeah, 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 yeah. One of my funniest memories: we played Oxford when we uh, not the one where we beat them seven-one because we'd beaten Stoke seven-nil, and then we yeah. beat Oxford a couple of weeks later seven-one. But the time before that, and I, I don't know whether you were playing at this time or not. But at the end of the game, one of the Birmingham City fans decided to scale the floodlights. And he was like, they were all pointing at him going, the Blues are going up, the Blues are going up. And he fell off and broke his leg. Did he really? Yeah. Wow. I, think Bassi, yes. I think John Bass was playing at those times. I think it was Bassi then. He might have been. Yeah, in. possibly. I mean, Bassi sort of. Yeah. That could have been my brother, actually. He did scale a, <laughs> he did scale a floodlight, but I think that was Shrewsbury, mm -hmm. I think, yeah. Yeah, great fans. Great yeah. fans. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, but like it must, it must, it must give you an amazing feeling. Like you know, there's thousands of people chanting your name. Phenomenal, and to, like you said, because I come from non-league, I've never experienced it really. Because you're playing in front of 300, 400, or thankfully, yeah. Yeah, well, we did. We had big crowds. It was two and a half thousand for like, you know, what what would be my level now, which is ridiculous. I mean, we average, and even at Twerton, it's a good old atmosphere. In fact, there's been some blue noses that have contacted me and come down and watched our games. And I right, think, cool. any any that want to come down, you guys will. I'll always look after you. You can come in, you can go up in our, our VIP area and you come and see me before the game, talk about what the tactics are. Anyone, honestly, any Blue Nose, any any of you guys, more than welcome to come down to Twerton Park. We, we might just get a coach together when this is all over then. I think that's yeah, a definitely. great idea, that is. Yeah, definitely, we'd, we'd look after you for sure. We're a good club like that and um, it'd be great to see you all down there anyway. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the, the, to suddenly go from that to 20-odd thousand, my debut was against Swindon. Um, I think it was in 98, Paul, wasn't it? I think. 97. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. And, uh, yeah, I played alongside Brucey, Gary Ablett, God rest his soul, Mark yeah. Ablett, left back. And I, I played against Mark Waters. And I can remember thinking, right, Mark Waters, yeah, good player. He obviously played down the road. I'm going to have to make this physical. And I can remember smashing him after about seven minutes. And I didn't really see him after that. So I sort of set me... Set me stall out early, and the Blues fans just took to me straight away because that's one thing the Blues fans love is the commitment. And yeah. I like to think whenever I put that shirt on, I, I certainly gave it my all. Yeah, I, I don't you. think you'll, I don't think you'll uh, find yeah. a Blues fan will have a bad word against you at all, Jerry. I think you know. No, not at all. No, no, I agree, Chris. Totally. Never. I've never heard a bad word against you. With loads no. against Nick and people like that, but that's nice to hear. It is nice to hear. Jerry, Benjamin Jackson's asking you, would, would, would you have happily stayed at Blues for another year if it meant playing on first-team football, but sorry, no first-team football, but training with Robbie Savage and Christophe Dugarry? I don't know why them two players are mentioned even in the same sentence. But, yeah, but, hair, uh, maybe, yeah, maybe the hair. Um, <laughs> 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 I 
No, I, I, um, I, I don't think so, Paul. I, I think, listen, I love my time at Birmingham, but I remember Brucey and we had quite an honest conversation and another bloke who I respect really highly. I remember they be alongside Steve. And yeah. um, that's quite a nice story. I know we divulged, but I like the stories. And I was about to make my debut against Swindon. And Brucey never did warm-ups in those days. He just went out and played because he could. And uh, <laughs> I remember that he just jumped in a bath. So he ran a bath, ran a hot bath. He got out of the bath. As we're going out, we're doing all this warm-ups. Come back in. Brucey just puts his kit on. We're about to go out. He pulls me to one side. He said, I just want to congratulate you, he said, on, on today. He said, I hope you have a good debut. He said, you effing leave my side one time today, you'll know about it. Because <laughs> he couldn't run in those days, Brucey, obviously. He came in, but what he could do was read the game. So anything in front of him, he took it down on his chest and he pinged it left and right. Anything <laughs> behind, I was running after it. Anything to the left, I was running after it. Anything to the right. And he had me on a bungee rope the whole game. But, but what great experience, what communication for a player making his debut to be alongside someone like Steve Bruce. Yeah, yeah. Um, in that. So... So, yeah, so when he was manager, he said, look, your time's going to be limited. Jeff Kenner was coming in. And I said, right, OK, I think I'll, I was 32. I thought yeah. I needed to go and get some more games in. Um, and I went with Kevin Broaders then off to Northampton. Yeah. Um, and played, played quite a few games there until doing my anterior crucial ligament. So, yeah, I yeah. think it was the time. I think it was the time. I was distraught leaving. Don't get me wrong. I was, I was, I was emotional walking out of West Hills, out of those gates. And you, footballers, you literally do. You put your boot... You, your, your boots in a bin liner and you walk out of a ground and suddenly the realisation, that's it, you've left that club. Yeah. Bear in mind, I've been there for five and a half years and got so many good relationships. Yeah. It's, it's quite tough to take. So um, mm. I think it was time to do it. I think it was time. Mm. And who was the best player you ever played with for us? Oh, well, Steve would be up there just for, for, his, for his knowledge, what he'd done in the game. And I mean, Stan, Stan was brilliant. I love Stan. Just oh, watching his stand up. Yeah. He, he was one of my closest friends, along with Grange. I mean, Grange were, were like that. Um, so you see, see, see Stan just taking the ball up the pitch for us. Oh, uh, great player, great player. But what we had was we had, we had a group of committed, proper blokes, like I said to you. They were, yeah. you know, if you, if you were frail, you wouldn't survive in that dressing room. No. You, you, had to, you, had to, you had to be a tough old boy to survive in there because you get told. If you weren't doing it, you get told and yeah. on in terms. But then... We'd have a drink afterwards. We'd make sure we pull everyone in together. If anyone's having a tough time, we'd pull everyone in together. On and off the pitch as well. So it's not just the stuff that you guys might see. There'll be issues off the pitch and we'd always look after each other as well. That's for sure. Yeah, sure. Mm. No, those are special. Great, great, great years going down the blues from between, say, 97 to 2002. You know, that squad was, was just fantastic. It was brilliant. Some yeah. big games. And doing them ligaments in don't half hurt, doesn't it, mate? That, what, anterior cruciate ligament? Oh, not great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that wasn't great. I did, I did mine in school. My knee just constantly used to dislocate. I think it was about 13 times. Oh, by the way, I've got to say hello to my friend Lynn from Warwick. She's listening tonight. Hi, Lynn. Uh, great that you're listening with us. And, uh, yeah, I did mine. <laughs> literally kicked football with my left foot and my right kneecap ended around the back of my leg. It, it was <laughs> like that. that finished my career there and then. Yeah, they're not. <laughs> they're not nice. They're not nice ones. They're not nice. That's ones. why I had to go into media and broadcasting and that. You know what I mean? So yeah. <laughs> you'll, get, you'll get there one day, Nick. Well, I've got to say on that as well that that even though I'd gone on loan, I'd gone permanent then to to Northampton. Yeah. And um, no disrespect to the physio they had there as well, but the first person to pick up the phone was Steve with our surgeon, and I wasn't a Blues player then, by the way. He said you come back and you have the rehabilitation with Nick Mc, Neil McDermott as well. So without that, I don't think I would have come back. So I was 32. Proper. Yeah. Mm. So Steve, that tells you the type of bloke. And, and I guess that tells you that how I was at that football club at Birmingham City. Because yes. he took his time to think, do you know what? We probably owe him that to come back, get the surgery with us. We're getting fit. And hopefully he gets... And I went on to play 200 and, 210 league games for Cheltenham after that. So mm -hmm. I'm thankful to That's Steve right. for okay. doing that. Yeah. Jerry, Jerry, it looks like the coach is being organised for the... Um, hey. for I think it, well, three bits. <laughs> Don't tell Paul Williams, though. Don't tell Paul Williams. But it's uh, three bits. It's, as long as there's a toilet, says Linda, well, I'll be there. Well, there you go. Yeah. I'll enjoy it. We get, yeah. we get, we get over, over 1,200 in it, Twerton Park, and it's a good atmosphere. It's a nice stadium. A real, a real old-school non-league ground as well. You'll really enjoy it. You'll really enjoy it. Good stuff. Good. Who was your... Uh, Jerry, sorry, this sorry. is going to happen. You do realise that, don't you? 
Yeah, no, absolutely. I'll, this I'll, is going to happen because once these people out there get hold of it, mate, nothing yeah. stops them. <laughs> I, know, mate, I, I can't wait, honestly. I've been trying to yeah. drum it up on because I said there has been some blue noses that have come down. I've had some Cheltenham fans, which has been nice, um, and I've tried to drum it up a little bit. But obviously, going through this, honestly, if you if you can get a fifty seat, I don't care. Bring them all down. We'll oh, you've not you've not seen the Tilton Talk bus. <laughs> it's mad. It's unique. It's, it's, it's unique. <laughs> Yeah, some posh Mercedes, is it? With the rooms <coughs> in the back. Well, we have a bar and everything on ours, yeah. yeah. Toilets. Bed. All my guns. Hold me from that. The bed's a Steve, Steve uh, Tarbuck says, how many blue noses can you fit in the ground? As we just said, it's... Well, we've got, yeah, so um, official attendance, I think capacity is three and a half thousand. Right, but okay. we, can get, we can get 8,000 in, so we'll just... You might have to start building. I'll speak, <laughs> I'll speak to our security officer and just warn him. In fact, I better tell the pubs first as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Mick Greaves wants to know, what, uh, what's your thoughts on Jude Bellingham? Oh, brilliant. I mean, as I said, I went to watch him. I haven't seen him live up until I went to watch the Bristol City game. Mm. And any of you went down to that. I thought he was terrific that night on a Friday night down at Ashton Gate. He's... Um, no, what a great lad, and he looks like he's got a good head on, on um, young shoulders as well. You just hope the people that the only worry in this is you hope the people who are advising him are the right people, his agents and his advisors and what have you. And I know he's been. Well, I think his dad's agent, to be honest with you, Jerry. Oh, good, good. Yeah, no, that's good. Uh, listen, any any young lad that comes through the football club like he has, you know, you think about Nathan, don't you, Nathan Redmond? Um, yeah, yeah. And Damari Gray. Damari Gray, um, then. Obviously, I look out for them, and he's he's a specimen as well, and he's a strong boy, physical boy. Oh yeah, yeah he takes prisoners. Yeah, he can really look after himself, and I like that yeah. about him as well. Yeah. So, no, I wish I wish Jude all the, all the very best because I think I think he could go all the way. Just if he's if he happens to be listening, my message to him would be: do not do not forget about what's made him a good player. So That's it's right. To talk about with young players and even players of experiences. It's your, it's your attitude. It's your work ethic. Mm. It's your humbleness. Um, that's and it's it. your friends. Yeah, and your friend. That's it. And that, Absolutely. That, that's well, I'll tell good. you what, though, Jerry, watch out for his younger brother. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, Is yeah. it Co Cody? Joe. 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 Thank you, Mark. Joe. Joe, yeah. Joe Bellingham. How old is he? Watch out for him. He's, I think he's about 14 and a half at the minute. Oh. And um, pff, he's going to go the same way. Bit, bit young for a loan then. Can't quite take him. At the right. moment, yeah, but um, <laughs> you know. snap him up, Jerry. Apparently, he shouldn't. He shouldn't be by the time next season starts. <laughs> we should build a link, actually, loan players to Birmingham, from Birmingham City to Bath, shouldn't we? Yeah, Isn't that's right, yeah. yeah. You should. You know? that, that, sorry, Jerry. That leads nicely to a question from Craig Courtney. Actually, he was just asking, have you ever tried to set up a friendly against Blues in any pre-season? I've thought of that. I have actually thought of that because um, I remember. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we're both, us, all us lot, we'll get in touch with the club and we'll try and make that happen. Because, again, mm. it, it's, a, it's a good club. It's a nice pitch. It's a good stadium. We play, I like to think we play football the right way. Um, I remember in our days, Trevor, because of his, his roots down in Plymouth, we always used to go down to HMS Drake, always down to Plymouth. Yeah. yeah. Season. We played Cheltenham on the way back and the likes. So, um, mm. no, I could, I could see it. I'd love that to happen. That'd, That'd be, be brilliant. brilliant. That'd be yeah. fantastic. Yeah, it'd be great. Good stuff. More coaches, please. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ray, Ray, Ray wants to know um, uh, who, who in your squad or league should be playing at a higher level? Anybody in the squad? Yeah, I'm, you think? the trouble is, I'm gonna, one of my players are going to be off here now, aren't they? So, <laughs> uh, they're, they're no, all you just don't want to give names away so we don't go poaching. Don't go, yeah, <laughs> no, it's all right. They're under contract, the ones that I want under contract. Yeah. Now, I've got a lad called um, Tom Smith. He scored, um, if you can go on, actually, yeah, I'd encourage all the fans to go, have a little look at some of our stuff on, on the Bath City Twitter page and Facebook. Yeah. Is, uh, our social media guys are really good and we're always putting up highlights and features and mm -hmm. what have you. And on there, you'll see a lad called Tom Smith. Um, he was predominantly, he played for Swindon Town, Swindon Boy. I took him on loan on our first spell. Um, he then got released from Swindon and he got a move, having scored 11 goals for us two years ago, to Cheltenham. Didn't really settle at Cheltenham under Gary Johnson, so I quickly snapped him up with a year left on his contract. So he's, he's on a two-year contract with us at the moment. He scored 17 goals from midfield, central midfield. Wow. Uh, he's um, he's right. a powerful, strong little strong boy. He's only about 5'7". Um, and just repeat his name again, if you would. Tom Smith. <laughs> Tom Smith. Tom Smith. We'll yeah. have him. We'll have him. He will, 
No, but, I mean, listen, he's in, he's in the team, he's in the league That's team. That's all right, no, it's all right, me, the, the agents are just behind me, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, mate, I got, I got 15% of any deal anyway, so... Right. Hey, <laughs> winner, winner, chicken you could pay for the coach then. I joke, I joke, I joke. Before any fans go, oh, bloody hell, Jerry's got 15 I haven't. Um, so, um, no, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a very good player, but we, so we take a lot of young players on loan from the FL club, so because of my budget for the league probably being mid-table. Um, I use the loan market quite a bit. So I take in Bristol City, Cheltenham, Swindon, Exeter. Um, I've taken players from all these clubs, but they have to be the right characters. Um, I won't just take in kids for the sake of it. I go and watch them. Um, I do this full time, so it is my job. Um, I go and watch them four or five times in the 23s, get to know them, speak to them. And if they fit the way we play and they're the right characters, then I'll take them on loan. And then it works both ways. Um, yeah, that's good. Players and they they improve us as a club as well. So, like yeah. so with the loan market, then Jerry, do you pay all of the wages or a percentage? No. So we, we come up with an agreement, Nick. Um, some clubs do it for nothing because they see it outweighed their wages they're on. They see what they're getting from us, men's football, yeah, yeah. Money, financial stuff. Um, but some clubs you'll pay fifty percent or whatever agreement you come to. While they're with us, we pay a bonus structure to them as well because they're with us and they're being successful or hopefully with us they're part of that as well so um no it's been it's been really good over two and a half years my first season we finished ninth um when i went in october uh, we finished fifth and in the playoffs last year and unfortunately missed out in the playoffs and then we're sitting like i say fourth joint third at the moment with weymouth um after another successful season so yeah fingers crossed we try and improve each year if we can mm-hmm. um and um, i want to try and get us into the national league if we can so you're, mm. at the moment, you're third in the league now, yeah. Um, so your season is, is is probably going to finish, and then it's the top. Is the, the is it the top ones that are going up, or are they playing a playoff from top down? Yeah, so it's a bit strange. So we're joint. So we're fourth, really, but we're joint third. I always say joint third sounds better. Um, and on goal difference. Um, so basically, top the top one goes up. Right. Second, second and third get a bye in the first set. Right. Fourth, fourth place seventh, fifth place sixth. Crikey. The winners of that will play second and third. Still with me, and then the winners go into a final. Um, and what it does is it makes it really competitive because you've got top. Mm, it does, but then the guy, the poor guys who were second and, and could be a lot of points ahead, you know, yeah. there's yeah. 10 or 14 points between that one and whoever's in seventh. Uh, it's a bit harsh, isn't it? Really, it mm. is. I mean, we, we at the moment, Wildstone have had a fantastic season, um, up there, and they've gone, they've gone a little bit, they've gone clear, but all the rest of us are quite tight in behind it. Um, so, did all clubs have to agree that then? On the loan, on the playoffs. On the structure of the playoffs, yeah. No, it was a league, a league structure that came out, um, and they, I think, I think there might have been a vote on it. I think, but everyone, everyone welcomed it, like you say, because it's that opportunity. You can be like 12th, 13th, 14th, yeah. and then suddenly next couple of weeks you suddenly drop into seventh. Keeps your season yeah, yeah. going, basically, doesn't it? Keeps the problem you've got going. now is that yeah. if it does, like it has ended, or the league games have ended, and it goes right, okay, the lads are in the playoffs, only get the opportunity to play in that. Well, someone who's eighth, ninth, tenth, who might have had an opportunity to go in, it's like hard luck, you know. So it's not mm. easy. Yeah. It's not easy. Work yes, <laughs> it's not an unprecedented situation that we're in, though, isn't it? Really, I mean, we've never known anything like this before. Not just stop a football season. No, I mean, I've seen not in our lifetimes anyway. I don't know about Chris, but not certainly not in my lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen League One and League Two have said they may go into a mini World Cup, haven't they? Um, yeah, that's that's been mentioned as well, which would be quite interesting. But. Yeah. Uh, mm. I don't know. I don't know. It's a difficult one for him. I think we've just got to wait and see. That's it. Uh, Paul? Yeah, a minute. Paul? Yeah. Sorry, Jerry. Yeah, we've, we asked you to um, name your Blues 1 to 11 of the players you played with for us. Oh, this is tough, mate. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, this is always tough because you, you don't want to upset your teammates. Because, like I said, we were such a good group. And I know I'll get bombarded after this because I haven't mentioned a few. But <laughs> Do it. Do it. <laughs> but yeah. um, I did it in two minutes. No. I, uh, so. Um, no, I've, I've got Ian, Ian Bennett in goal. Um, yeah, what formation? What's your formation? This is old school and I don't ever play it. It's just to fit the team, 4 4 2. If you ask anyone about my coaching and managerial, I never play 4 4 2 ever. Um, <laughs> so, um, but like I said, it was just to fit these lads in, really. Um, so, Benno, Benno in goal for me. Um, he, was, he was a massive part of when I was playing for the club, obviously. Um, I mean, we had Kevin Paul as well. I've got to say, Kevin was terrific whenever he went in. He never, ever let us down, Kev, um, and was a, was a good goalkeeper. Nico Vassen a little bit later, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but for me, Benno, 
he, off the pitch as well, such a dry sense of humour, great character. Um, not not the biggest. He kept proclaiming he was over six foot. He never was. He was five eleven. Uh, and I, I read something today, I think I was reading something or whatever, and he said whenever he wore his long studs, he was over six, six foot. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, he was, he was a great shot stopper, wasn't he? Fantastic shot stopper. Yeah, and, good. Uh, and, a, and an all-round good, good lad as well. So Benno, Benno would go in there. Um, Gary Rowett, it right back. Um, yeah. The sod, because he kept me out of the team. And um, mm. he was, if, if, if you were a right back at any championship club or a one and a two at right back, you didn't want Gary Rowett. That's the one you didn't want. Cause he was, he was too good for us at that time. I've got to say he was, he, yeah, was, I agree. he was a level above. He yeah. Had, he could head it. He had a spring. He had a diagonal. He could defend in a one V one. He got forward and crossed it really well. There was nothing he couldn't do. Um, no. And he was fit as a fiddle as well. So he never got injured. Hardly no. ever was injured. Um, he, he did a piece on me once when he left and he said he felt, he felt as if I was a bit too nice. He said he felt as if he should have come out of the team on some occasions, but because I never went in and knocked the door down, um, it never really happened, which is interesting. Um, <laughs> but he was he was a great, great player, and obviously he's gone on and had a good managerial career in there as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, Steve Bruce, at right side centre-back, for what I mentioned before, uh, made a debut alongside him, um, just a calming influence, such a good reader of the game, and certainly taught me later in my career that, you didn't have to be, so when I got to my late 30s, how you read the game and how your understanding of the game is and you get the right people around you, you can still perform at a high level in your late 30s like he did. Mm. And um, I saw him in Portugal last summer, actually, and um, he was in a restaurant and they were all in there, you know, Steve Harper and what have you, and I thought, he, you know, he's going to remember me. You, th you think that, I don't know why, I still think that. Um, he caught eyes on me straight away, straight over sat with me for 25, 30 minutes, just chatting through old times. Knew I was managing at Bath, how amazing is that? And um, had a good old chat with him. So, no, yeah. good, good guy. Um, Michael Johnson, John Skitt, le left side centre back. Yeah. Um, I've been in touch with him a lot through me coaching because he's going on and had various roles in coaching. And I think he's a, he's a fantastic person as well. Got good values, Jono. But yeah. Again, wasn't, wasn't tall, wasn't big, but what spring. Yeah. But, what what a leap he had on him and um no a really good player hardly ever got beat even when people went past him he seemed to have that long left leg didn't he that went underneath people yeah and um a good leader another good character to have in the have in the dressing room as well and how close was he jerry to being that hero to get us promoted with that header that hit the post in the playoff final do you remember I that wish, i wish he had as well i wish he had. I do. yeah <coughs> because he's i mean he's held in such a good high regard anyway with the blues fans yeah but that, that that there would have put him in Darren Carter territory, wouldn't it? That would have yeah, 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 stuck, yeah, him, yeah. stuck him right out there. So, um, yeah, so, so Jono, Jono there. Mel Mucker Grange at left back. Um, yeah. So I nothing got him. past him, did it? Nothing, nothing. <laughs> Grange, we were really friendly, really friendly. Families were friendly. And he's, um, he, was, he was a bit like me, really. Loved to tackle, very committed. Um, and his son now plays for Dulwich Hamlet in our league as a goalkeeper, Charlie. Right, yeah. We played them not so long ago and we beat them three two at Twerk and then Grange come down and watch the game. So that was good. That was good to catch up with Martin. And yeah. Have a beer with him as well. So that was nice. That's um, good. Proper, proper bloke, another one. Um right midfield, Nicky Eden. Purely, yeah. Purely, yeah. purely purely on that relationship. I could have chose John McCarthy because I did play John played a lot in front of me at times as well. Um mm. and John was very direct, great in his one v ones, different to Nick. John could go past people. But Nick was probably the best crosser of the ball that I've played with. Yeah. His delivery, his delivery. He didn't have that one v one pace to go by people, but he shaped balls past them. Any ball that came back to him knew was coming in with quality. So if you had Mooney or Dealey or anyone in their furs, you knew it was coming in with quality. Yeah. And um, another good guy. Um, centre midfield, uh, Martin O'Connor, skip. Yeah. yeah. So he's my captain and our captain. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> Still called Skip to this day. Yeah. Um, yeah. That tells you the respect that everyone's got for the man. He's in everybody's, yeah. team. He's in everybody's team, isn't he? He's in everybody's team, Skip. Yeah, he, yeah. he, he, he has to be um, because he was, he drove the team at times, I've got to say. He, mm. he had everyone on the front foot and he got around people and, you know, in, in no uncertain terms, he, he'd dig you out as well properly. But again, like I say, afterwards, he'd pick you up and have a beer and 
what have you. Yeah. So great, great leader. Um, Hughesy then, Brian Hughes. So he came in around a similar time to me, actually, from yeah. um, Wrexham, if you remember. Great, yeah. great player. 700 grand, wasn't it? We got quite him, I think it was something like that. What's that, sorry? 700, was it? About 700 grand or something like that? Yeah, for... it was. Yeah, 800,000, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it was big money. <laughs> yeah. Just testing you now. Just, um, just, after, just after he scored against us as well, wasn't it, in the FA Cup? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was. Yeah. So he was he was different, wasn't he? So he, he had that... He had that he was, that he was different, cool. great touch, good ability, could weave past players yeah. um, and, and create something out of nothing. Um, yeah. So I put him alongside there. I think they complemented each other. Could have had Danny Sonner in there, another player I really rate and a nice, proper character. He was Danny, um, and he was a gifted, yeah. gifted player as well. But I thought, I thought in there with Brian that complemented Martin quite nicely as well. Each other. <laughs> um, on the left, Stan had to be Stan. Um, yeah, could not be, could it? No, nah, he, he he just took the ball at the pitch for us. His crossing was brilliant. He. Um, he was a financial advisor for the squad as well. So Stan was I wouldn't say <laughs> tight, but he's very clever with his money. And um, any long trips away, you'd see players sat with Stan on the coach and you knew what would be happening. He'd be going through your finances, working out where you've got to put it, ices, buy a flat there, do this, do that. Um, <laughs> he's a great guy. And I, I went over and seen him in Australia. I went to his little girl's christening in, in um, Adelaide. Oh. And spent, spent some like five weeks over there with Stan. So Nice uh, one. That, that that will always live long in memory as well. So great guy, and up top um, AJ because AJ broke in around my time. Yeah, <laughs> I remember. I remember Trevor saying to him all the time, "You've got a when you get yourself in around that 18 yard box, just go over, just keep going over." And he couldn't get his head around it because he felt as if he was cheating. Yeah, but he was one of the first players I saw that started that trend a little bit. You know, in a one v one, if someone just nicked you or touched you. He would go over and win us so many free kicks, so many penalties. Um, good at stretching the stretching the pitch down in behind. So we had a lot of good footballers. And AJ was different. He didn't want to come to feet. He wanted to go in behind all the time. Mm. Um, mm. Underest he, he underestimated a, player, I thought. He was. Yeah. He was. And he obviously went on to score a lot of goals, didn't he, in his career? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did, yeah. Is it, is it, is I remember it? his first one at St Andrews, to be honest with you. I think I was up in the old main stand then, back then. Yeah. Mm. Massive, massive hero at uh, Palace, isn't he? I yeah, huge. Yeah. He had hair in those days as well. He's another one out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, <laughs> when he first got in. And I've put I've put the horse alongside him because Ooh. um Jeff Jeff is a bit like me, you know, he's a working class lad. Um he'd come from non-league football, hadn't he, and gone to Fulham. Yeah. Uh, really appreciated every minute he had as a football player. No airs and graces about him, wanted to batter people, but he had more than that. He had some quality, he linked the play, he scored. He scored two goals, didn't he, in that massive game against Ipswich as well, of course. Yeah. yeah. Uh, got, us, got us to the final and just a proper bloke. You, you just want to be around Jeff all the time. You want to Yeah. You want to you want to be his mate and you and it's good to have him as a teammate as well. You knew if he was in your team, he'd give you everything he had. And I thought those two together formed a formed a good partnership. So Yeah. There's loads, there's loads I've missed out, you know, like people like Gary Ablett, as I said, and <laughs> Dealey, even Dealey, I thought about Dealey long and hard. Um, he would certainly get in and around it. As well, um, Peter on Peter on love. Not is an interesting one because he he was. I think I was saying today to, to Chris. Yeah. He, he came in. I think he was about fifty three when he signed for Blues. He kept saying he was <laughs> twenty eight, twenty nine. He, um, and he came in with dodgy knees from Coventry. He got signed, I think, on a pay as you play sort of deal. Um, but he did have an impact for us. And he was again. He he was another one in a one v one. And I, the one I do forget about is when it was in that debut game was Paul Furlong. I yes. Heard, Furs was a great striker. Now, I know yeah. the Blues fans, I remember people saying Furs doesn't play around Christmas. It got to like November, December, and Furs was never playing because he always picked up a niggle or an injury. But yeah. He was the best. It, if you put a ball into Furs, you knew he would keep hold of it by holding a man off with his right arm, receiving the ball with his left foot. And there's no yeah. way the defender could ever get to the ball. He used to swivel left and right with it. He was so good at that. Um, so yeah, Furs Furs have been around it, but there's there's many more, and it's, you can't you can't mention more. Percy springs to mind, of course. Yeah. Um, but that group, that whole squad, if I haven't mentioned you, you were you were all. I learned so much off all of them. Um, yeah. And I'm proud to say they were my teammates as well. I've got to say that. Proper times, proper times. <laughs> yeah. Well, that team, that, that team would probably win the championship now. Wouldn't it? Already, Paul. Yeah. 
Uh, Can't Lin- believe an hour's Lin- gone Linda, Linda wants to Linda wants to know. Now, who does she pay the deposit to for the coach? <laughs> <laughs> Run away! <laughs> Can you see me still? You're right. Not really. It's got very really dark. You have. Yeah. So West Country. You got no mate. lights in your down in the West, West Country. West Country, mate. On a generator. <laughs> well. Carl, Carl Beazell has asked if if you could sign one current player from Blues for back, who would it be and why? I'd have to be Jude, wouldn't it? I'd have to. I'd have to take him because he would just, he would just rip the league. He would just literally rip the league up. He would. Um, and, he, and I tell you what else he'd be. He'd be a great example to all the other players, the young players as well. So yeah. his attitude to the game would be infectious. And I, I like that. I like that in him as well. Like I said, I, I hope that stays with him. I'm sure it will. Oh, He's yeah. got a grounded family. I know that. And, a, and he looks a grounded lad. So hopefully he does. Yeah, and have you got any good pranks you can tell us about Jerry that were that were played amongst the, that squad? Any good pranks? Yeah. Well, oh, crikey, I've got a few that I couldn't say about. There's plenty of stuff that went on in that group that. No, I, I don't. I don't know really. I mean, Benno, Benno, <laughs> it's so it's so hard to think of anything that I could say over the radio. Um, Benno was constantly at it, and um, the, the usual stuff, messing around with socks and that, and players' kit. Mostly, it was mainly about gear. So if you came in yeah. with some some dodgy gear, you knew after training that it probably wouldn't be there or be cut up into shreds. So, um, it was, um, I remember, I remember, I remember John Ski, uh, Michael Johnson coming in and when Brian Hughes signed for us, he turned up with loads of gold jewellery. He had gold jewellery everywhere. And he, he quickly got the nickname of Bobby George. Uh, <laughs> he, he looked like Bobby with all the jewellery on and what have you. Yeah. So um, now there was loads, loads and loads of bits going on and pranks and, but like I said, not, there was some stuff to this day that we couldn't ever tell people that had gone on because, like I said, we were, we were a close-knit group on and off the pitch. Some of the PFA dudes you do not want to know about. Um, <laughs> and what, one in particular, and the lads will know what I'm talking about, one in particular when we had to come back into training on Monday um, will probably go down in history, that PFA do down there. I can't say any more than that. Oh, <laughs> I was getting drawn in then as well. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Well, unfortunately, time has beat us. We've done an hour. Would you believe that? That's gone so quickly. It's gone really. Uh, how quick did that go? Paul no, Hipkiss, thanks ever so much for your input again once again and uh, your, your savant memory. Chris Brown, thanks for being on uh, on uh, the dials and the knobs and buttons tonight. And uh, thanks for getting it all going. No Even though we had a little bit of a technical glitch earlier on in the evening. And Jerry Gill, what an absolute star. What a player. What memory. Um, uh, you're still revered by everybody at the club, mate, honestly. I, I, I genuinely mean that. And I know because of, of how people talk about you from the time when you were there. No, it's lovely well, here. It, it, it'll always be a place close, very close to my heart and, and my club. Birmingham City will always be my club. I know I said I'm a Liverpool supporter, but Birmingham City will be my club. And um, I look forward to coming up. As soon as I can, I'm definitely going to come up and um, pay, pay everyone at St Andrews and yourselves a visit. Well, we're definitely going to come down. It's been a pleasure talking to you, Jerry. Enjoyed it, mate. Thanks, man. <clears throat> Thanks. Thanks. Jerry Someone needs to switch your light back on as well, mate. You've got all dark. Yeah, mate, I'll put the 50 p in now, mate. <laughs> take it easy, guys. Cheers, Jerry. Hey, Jerry, take it easy. Thanks ever so much. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Tilton Talk Show. We'll do the same again next Monday night. Uh, unfortunately, we have to do it again from home, but hey-ho. That's just the rules at the minute, but uh, what we will do is we'll keep in touch with you all, um, all our listeners, viewers, all our vulnerable friends, one thing or another, but, you know, all our family. And you know what? Just stay at home, stay at home, stay at home. We've heard enough bad news this week. And Paul, you've had a couple of friends who have lost some arms this week as well. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, we don't want any more. We, you know, come on, people, please just do as you're told, do as you're asked. It's difficult, but be safe, be safe. Mrs. Brown. <laughs> thank you very much indeed. We'll be back here next Monday, hopefully around about 7.30. Uh, all the technical glitches and that, well, you know, they're just technical glitches, aren't they? We get over them and we just carry on because that's what we do. And I'd like to say goodbye to each and every single one of you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for viewing. Jerry, thanks for ever so much for being with us. Well, and uh, we will, we will. Well. I promise you, I promise you, this coach trip is going to happen. <laughs> it is definitely going to happen. Um, <laughs> hey, hey he's going. He's put a light on, look. Hey. He's, put light on. he's put a big light on. <laughs> Bless you all, lads. Take care. <laughs> See ya. Bless you, Jeffy. Take care. All the best. Take care. Hello, everybody. And Paul Lipkiss, thank you very much. Chris Brown, thank you very much. And for myself, good night. All the best. Take care. And always keep your heart and soul. Take care. We'll support you till the end of